I'm old Sneelock. This is the breast drill that I disassembled. And I taken it down a little bit further than what the video showed. Did manage to get most of the pieces out of it in good shape. I'm going to try and decipher what the name is on this drill. Not one I recognize. And I don't think I'm going to disassemble this one down as far as I did the others. It was an interesting prospect and I, I liked doing it, but I'm a little more concerned about this one because it's in better shape than the five dollar I'm not going to strip this one down as far as I did the five dollar breast drill because this one's in better shape it's, it's rustier and quite a bit dirtier but the frame is straight and it doesn't have any major missing pieces. If you remember the plate on the other one was snapped off and it didn't have this handle. I'm hoping to be able to scrape down and find a name stamped into the handle. Not that it matters a whole lot, it's just nice to know who made the tool that you're working on. Now you can see why I didn't want to do this on my nice wooden bench top. It's kind of dirty. I'm not going to be able to pull the handle off of this one as easily. The other one was held on with a nut. This one is riveted. Now I can take the rivet out and I probably can make a new rivet. Let's not make more work out of this than I need to. up a little closer so you can see better what I'm doing. Now Miller's Falls like to stamp the name on the handle. And I'm hoping this company did too. Well, if it's on there, it's pretty well hidden. It looks like I'm going to have to go to the power tools. Nothing wrong with the proper use of force. I got a good percentage of it cleaned off, but I couldn't get to the spot that I figured the stampings were, of course. That was the one spot I couldn't reach. There's a name stamped in it. I think I need a sanding box. Miller's Falls. Really hard to see because it's very badly corroded. All I can do is, is shine the high spots and hope the dark spots show up. Number 120B. This main wheel uh, still has a little bit of the orange paint left on it. But I think this is one that's going to go into the vinegar. It's getting cold enough out that I don't want to have things in the electrolysis tank. If it freezes overnight, then you have to spend a lot of time getting them out.
see that that handle is pretty well fitted. That's two items that are clean. This one and this one, they're going to go into the vinegar. Vinegar has one distinct advantage over electrolysis. It is a cleaning agent. Back when I was a young lad, I worked for a woman named Mrs. Golkert, and she had me washing her windows. Well, what she had me use was vinegar. Vinegar and water mixed together. And newspapers. Of course, finding a newspaper now is kind of an unusual thing anymore. Uh, everybody's going on the internet and getting their news, so newspapers aren't as common. But back then, everybody got a newspaper every day. And newsprint was a good substitute for what we now use paper towels for. Clean this up and get it ready for some finish on there. Kind of that rivet a little bit, get some of the rust crap off of it. Take some of the bird splinters off of it, from where it's been sitting in the damp for a good number of years, I think. Especially going by the way that that rod is pitted. It's been sitting in the damp quite a bit. There's those two, clean and ready. Now this one's going to take a little more doing. This is that Mineral Spirits paintbrush cleaner. Safer paint thinner. Thins and cleans and preps like regular paint thinner, less harsh on skin than regular paint thinner, low odor, non-flammable. That's why I use it. I'm here in the basement of the house, and I'm thinking that non-flammable is a good thing. And the rest of the people in the house think that low odor is a good thing too. I bought these gloves at Harbor Freight and they're 9 mil. I've been using the blue 3 mil ones and they pretty much tore up after a couple of uses. Sometimes right in the middle of the first use. Kind of negates the purpose of using them. Because they are a pain in the butt. They're hot. Your hands get really sweaty inside the glove. But they do keep the dirt off your fingers. And this greasy dirt gets right into my fingers and I have to scrub like the dickens to get it out. I can see that this stuff is actually starting to break it down. 
Now, I'm not going to drive the gear off. Like I said, I'm not going to take this one down as far as I did the other one. The gear on the other one was a good thing to take apart because it had two broken bearings in it. But this one, the only bearings in it that I have are right here inside this race. Right there. And I can actually open that up and see all the bearings. And all the bearings are rolling. And they're working just fine. So I'm thinking, somebody oiled this. And they may have oiled it only occasionally, but before it got set for all the decades to sit in the dark, somebody oiled it. And that oil kept all these things from rusting up. They're not rusty. They're grimy. They got crap all over them. And if I don't dip this in the vinegar, I won't get vinegar down into the bearings. And vinegar's fine. You can use vinegar, and I, I actually like using vinegar. It does a good job of removing rust, and it cleans and does a good job of doing that. Mineral spirits, this stuff does nothing for rust. Will not touch it. But that's not the purpose of it. It's not designed to take off oxidation. It's only designed to thin paint and clean brushes that have paint in them. But it is a thinner and it's also a, a let's see, what, what am I trying to think of? What is the word? It's a solvent. That's the word. Paint thinner is a solvent and it dissolves oils. Part of why I don't want to have it on my hands is because it dissolves the oil in my skin and causes my skin to dry out and crack. But in the case of this, it won't cause the steel to dry out and crack. All it's going to do is take that age-old oil that's kept these parts from rusting and break it down so that it washes away. And when the oil washes away, the grit and crack will wash away also. These gears are being difficult. I think I'm going to give myself a little hand cleaning this. I'm going to lock it in the vise so I can run that cloth through it a little bit better. I don't know if you can see them, but I can see those ball bearings in there. And they all appear to be rolling along just like they're supposed to. There's no clatter or noise inside that bearing housing so I'm not going to take this thing apart. If I wanted to I'd have to drive that pin out from this side and that pin is driven through the joint between the two gears and they evidently get this one slipped on inside because that has a pocket that slips over the shaft up here then this one goes down in behind it because this one is flat across the bottom. 
So I would have to disassemble that pin by driving it out, pull the shaft out, slip this gear out, pull this gear back to remove it, then to re reverse the ascent for the assembly process I would put the gear in first, this gear in first, then slip this one in, and then slip the shaft in and line those holes up. Uh, after the trouble I had with the last one, and knowing that these are considered to be a one-off deal, you're not supposed to ever take that gear, that uh, pin out, I'm not going to mess with it. It's going to last a long, long time doing just what it's been doing. I think it'll be more than happy to remain that way. Now we're down to the chuck. And the chucks are usually a pain in the butt to take apart. They're not designed to be disassembled. You can do it. The little springs in here tend to get screwed up and occasionally you have to disassemble those springs and take them out to get this thing to work. But I think this one the only problem with it, it has been left set and it has corroded up. And that little plunger down in there got sticky. Inside the chuck there's a cup shaped pressure plate that sits down over the end of this threaded rod. And once it gets down there and engages the threaded rod, as the chuck is turned onto the shaft, that pressure plate it is forced up through the chuck and it engages the chuck jaws and causes the chuck jaws to advance to the end of the chuck. Now there's still a bunch of crap in there and I'm going to try and wash that out but I don't want to disassemble this. It's a threaded barrel and it's really tough to get off. Very good likelihood that I would damage the chuck if I attempted it. Well, I'm going to put this into the solvent bath to soak, paint thinner. Let's see if I can't get that to clean up. But before I do that, I'm going to wire brush the outside of it.